Has this ever happened to you? You're trying to play Game Boy with your headphones on when suddenly you have to take a poo. You walk carefully through the mess that is your house and find your way to the bathroom, only to slip and fall on the bath mat. Your Game Boy goes flying over the shower curtain rod. Your headphones wrap around your throat and your neck breaks instantly, killing you in the process. Your death is ruled a suicide. So tragic. There has to be a better way. And now there is. Thanks to this simple Bluetooth chip, you can play Game Boy without ever having to accidentally kill yourself ever again. But before we begin, remember to hit that subscribe button, because if you don't subscribe, I'm never going to put Bluetooth in any of my Game Boys. And you know what that means. Bloop, 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 bloop. Bloop. So I got this Bluetooth audio emitter and these little touch buttons here off AliExpress. But I think this might work if we just try and use the select button on the Game Boy as well. So we'll try a couple different methods and see what works. Now I've got this Game Boy Pocket here, which has a real messed up uh, backlit display going on. That's something that I did a while ago. I haven't fixed it yet. I don't know if I'm going to fix it. It's a Game Boy Pocket, I kind of don't care that much. I've got so many of these things laying around that I've never done anything with. I've got a whole box of them under my bed. I'm sure I'll do something with them eventually, but just for now, this is what I got. All right, we're gonna start by taking our Game Boy apart. We got six screws on the outside, and then I think three on the inside. You, you guys know the drill by now. If you don't know how to take a Game Boy apart, look at the screws, and then use the same screwdriver that the screw looks like on those screws, and then unscrew them that way. You can see that I have been in here before because I have forgotten the screws. So if you also forgot the screws, bonus, because that's less work for you to do now. But you're still going to have to go and find screws for later if you really want to use this for serious. I don't care though, this is just a proof of concept at this point. So we're going to open that up and you see we got three screws here on the inside. It looks like in my infinite wisdom, I might have stripped one of these screws or multiple screws. I don't really know. We're going to find out. That's why it's important to use JIS and not Phillips head when you're trying to unscrew these. That's the big importance of having a proper screwdriver set. All right, we're going to undo our screen. I'm going to use just one of these screwdrivers that comes with every other kit to actually get this out of here because that just takes the stress off of like any one part of, of the cable. It really separates that stress. It, it spreads that stress out. You guys ever had your stress spread out? And if you're like me, you're also going to have to unsolder these two cables here. But if you don't have a backlight going, you're not gonna have to worry about that. This is not a good time for me to be using chisel tip. Let's introduce a little bit of fresh solder in there. Have you met solder? <laughs> We're going to take this whole mess and just put it off to the side. We don't need to take any buttons out. We don't need to do anything with anything on this front part here. We only care about the main board. All right, let's get this open. I don't have scissors around, so I'm going to use my flush cutters. Hey, I said flush cutters, not flush cutters. Those are for later. So I've got this pack of shrink tubing. Hopefully we can fit this, this thing here into some shrink tubing, because that's going to make our lives a lot easier here. I'm thinking I'm going to place it right down here. Future Tanner here. <laughs> no, you're not going to fit that there. That's never going to fit. But you can see that if we were to just kind of place this down like that, we're going to get some shorts. It's going to be like Youngster Joey, the amount of shorts going on. He loves shorts. They're comfy and easy to wear. Oh yeah, look at that. That's going to get shrunk wrapped so well. Okay, I got here some 32 gauge wire. I'm gonna be using this primarily. I've got three colors here. You can use as many colors as you want. You can use one color, you can use a rainbow. I don't care. Actually, it'd be great if we could place it right there. That would give it a good... Oh no, no, that wouldn't work because then... Then it would be blocked by this metal. Oh, where does this fit? Why won't this fit anywhere? All my life, people have told me I don't fit in. Maybe I've just been in the wrong place. Hey, that could work. That could work. And that fits just so well in there. It's kind of beautiful. 
Okay, so you can see on the back of this, it actually has everything listed that you need. We saw at the beginning of this where positive and negative were plugged in for the bivert screen mod. Positive and negative are down here, that bottom one right by my finger there. This one right here is negative. This one's positive. So we've got our 5 volt and our P ground. Before we start doing any of this, I'm going to change my tip over. Be careful, it's hot. Trim a bit of wire. And let's get our multimeter out and check for some common ground. At least that's what I would do if I hadn't have left my multimeter on last time I used it, completely draining the battery right after I put a fresh battery in there. Alright, I did some research and it turns out that our chip here is rated for 5 volts but can handle 3.3 volts. It can work off of that. And our power is low enough where we can actually get away with using this 34 gauge wire. Now we should go a little bit bigger, realistically, but we don't have to. So that means that our placement right here is going to work out. At least if it would, if we could fit it there. Placed here, it's getting in the way of the ribbon cable, which is not ideal. We might be able to fit it if we can get it to wrap around the screw post. Maybe by taking off some of the antenna. Check that out. Now we buy ourselves a little bit more room. We lose a little bit of connectivity, but I think we should be fine. It'd be nice if I put this on the right way. All right, that should work. So let's solder some wires on and get testing. Future Tanner here, pretending like this is a terrible idea. There's a hole. Use it. I cut out about five minutes of me just trying to get rid of this solder that I just tinned on here. Terrible idea. All right, we've got power. Now, at this point, you should really check if these are connected or not with your multimeter and just beep it out and see if it beeps. Uh, if it does beep, then, you know, you've got a problem, obviously. But stupidly, I'm recording this late into the evening, and the last time I used my multimeter, I left it on, and I have no additional 9-volt batteries in the house. Trust me, I checked all the smoke alarms. They're all unplugged. Don't do what Tanner does. Everyone is stupid except me. So next, we've got RX, TX, we don't need those, then we've got NL, NR, and A ground. So NL, NR, those are going to be audio in, and if you check this board, oh look, LN, RN. LN and RN turns out go to the speaker because that makes sense. Because it just so happens, we can use the volume knob. And actually, that last pin down there on the volume knob is ground. So we can use three of these five pins and get all of our audio off of that. Which is just fantastic. We can use that VR1 ground you see there. And that should work fine. LN, RN, VR1 ground. And what that's going to do is allow us to steal audio off the board without having it affected by the volume wheel. VR1, SO1, and VR1, SO2 are what we actually want to use, and that's right and left respectively. Taking off way more wire than we need. Always take off more wire than you need. Do not need this much wire at all. Well, I want one red, one black, and I gotta find the white spool. There we go, finally. Now, which wires go where? I don't remember. Is this one one that we want? I can pick it up. I guess it is. 
I'm going to go red for right because R and R go together. That makes sense to me. Red for right, white for left, black for ground. I didn't just use my teeth as wire cutters. You're disgusting. I go through the right hole. No, nope, it's left. Okay. I'm going to solder it down on this side this time. That was much easier, quite a bit cleaner. Let's see how clean that, that actually is. Next thing we want is white. Ah, oh, there we go. White like the Republican Party. And I believe we're bridging TX there. I am going grab my flux. I'd love to give me some no clean flux. I currently have the do clean flux. Okay, now I'm going to actually twist these up. It does keep them all together and makes routing a little bit easier, I think. I just realized if we wanted to for power, I'm noticing that there's a VDD right here. What if that's for the cartridge slot though? I guess I'm gonna give it a shot. So I'm going to use this P2 ground here, P2 ground, which I know is for the screen. I wonder if that's going to cause any issues with actually putting the screen in there, though. Boring! All right, I'm cutting this footage. All you need to know is that I got all the wires routed. I just need to find a place to wire up the select button now. But first, I have to get a battery for my multimeter. All right, I'm back. I got a dollar store battery because I need to use this piece of crap. Last time I just kind of left it on. A one dollar mistake. Not great. Yep, it's dead. Ah, that one's fresh. I need to get a new one of these. One that actually beeps, because this one doesn't beep at all. Uh, this one here is ground. This one is the actual select button. So I want to find out where this goes to because I think it goes to one of the- Oh, hey! Is that first try? Yeah, right there. That's what I want. It'd be really nice if I could get that up there on a 90 degree angle so we didn't lose all of our antenna. So that that's what this part is here. It's an antenna. I'm going to try and solder that real quick. Oh, look at that. We got ourselves a right angle. Oh, yes. Look at that. It's perfect. All right, I've got here just a JBL Bluetooth speaker. Okay, it's pairing. Now we're going to turn that on and see if they pair. Uh, it's not pairing. It's not working. Also, why won't the audio go all the way off? I'm not sure if it was like that before. Maybe if I take off this antenna, it'll work. Nope. How's your father's project coming along? I think he's almost done. <laughs> yeah, he's done. All right, I give up for today. Last night, I was sitting on my couch, playing with my circuit boards, when I made some discoveries. So first discovery I made was that I did these two wrong. They actually need to be on the VR1, S01, and S02. Thank you to Tito from Macho Nacho Productions for his video using this thing with the Game Boy Advanced SP. So that's the first thing that I discovered, and I managed to get it to pair. Because it's in the wrong hole, it didn't pair nicely, but it paired nonetheless. So as it turns out, the way that you get it to pair is to actually hold down the connect button. You have to hold down the connect button. Even though it's flashing angry blue at you, it'll only stop flashing when you've actually connected. So something else I discovered last night is that we don't have to use VDD all the way down here. 
We can take VDD from right there if we were to open up this solder mask here. This is all VDD along here, and this is ground. So we don't have to take ground from here. We don't have to take ground from here. We can just take ground directly from here, right beside the bore. And we can take VDD from right beside that. In fact, the only thing that we need to go down here for is left and right. And we can take select from, actually, we can use this one right here for select. If you follow this route along, it, it matches up to this part right here. So we can get select up here, VDD here, ground here. Forget that, forget that, those two stay. Easy peasy, if you really want to be clean about it. I'm not going to clean this up right now though, because I want to just prove that this works, both to you and to myself. Yeah, it's pairing. That scared me. Okay, it's down to the lowest volume setting. Whew. Okay. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So, that works. This length seems to work fine for the antenna. And honestly, that makes me happy. So, I guess we can just kind of put it away and see if we can't get this all reassembled. Got a pair of scissors. Scissors would work better for this, but I'm not going to go grab a pair of scissors just to do this. Don't care that much. Alright, I'll be right back. I'm going to go run this under a hairdryer. Okay, there we go. It would appear that our shrink tubing shrunk in a slightly incorrect place. I would have very much liked to have it hanging over that, but I did not do that well. So I'm just going to put a little bit of captain over it. Oh, captain, my cap. Okay, now I'm coming into a bit of a problem here, where this ain't gonna close. So that's one issue I've got so far. But uh, you know what, right now I don't care. I just wanna get this closed and see if it'll work. All things considered, it's a little bulgy, but not terrible. Oh, of course, I forgot the power switch. Unfortunately, these capacitors, this capacitor, this capacitor, and this capacitor are all, are all getting in the way. And that's frustrating. I could try to relocate them down here, but that'd take wire and patience that I don't have right now. Well, I'm sure I'll try that at another time. Again, pretty bulgy. Okay, so that's currently coming from the Game Boy. It's pairing. Ooh, what is happening with my screen there, I wonder? Okay, it's still pairing. Oh, it's pressure. That's what's happening with the screen. Yes, this might sever the wires, having it hang out like that, but it makes testing a lot easier. So I'm going to do it. I'm not sure if you can see that. There's that little flashing blue light in there. That's going to tell us if we're connected or not. I'm holding down select right now, and it's still not working. And that's pretty much as far as I got. I could get it to pair when it was outside of the case. But when it was inside of the case, it was bulging and pushing on the screen, and it wouldn't pair. I know there's a way to get this in here somehow, I just haven't been able to figure it out yet. So at some point in the future, I'm going to have to come up with a way of doing that. But for now, this is as far as we're going to go. If you've tried it yourself, please let me know how it went in the comments below. Tanner does mods, Tanner does mods, this is the ending theme of Tanner does mods. Please leave a comment and subscribe. And share with your friends and come back again next time.